I'm Brian Dawson from Full Cycle Bioplastics. I'm gonna to try to move fast. I win a bet if I get through this in three minutes. So, um, so we know the problem. There's waste, there's plastic. Most people address these as two separate issues. We don't. We actually take waste, any kind of organic waste, and we make it into a biodegradable plastic that can then be repurposed as consumer products, industrial products, et cetera. A lot of people don't know this. Many of the bioplastics in the market, many of the material that water bottles are made of, do not dissolve in the ocean. Though they can be composted, they don't actually break down in a marine, marine environment. Our bioplastic actually breaks down in the ocean. Corn should be used to feed people, not to make plastic, particularly not to make plastic water bottles. We use only waste, and we actually concentrate on non-edible waste for our feedstock. So please don't take the snack out of this girl's mouth. She will cry, and that's not cool. Um, we don't use any GMOs, which allows us to partner with people like farmers, food processors, waste haulers, partner on site to repurpose the waste there, thus further reducing any uh, emissions or uh, climate change effects from logistics and shipping of said waste products. We have a partnership with the city of San Francisco and their major waste hauler there to take organics from their green bin program and make it into a bioplastic resin, which will then be repurposed as products for the citizens of the city. We have a partner, uh, partnership with Wawona Frozen Foods, which is one of the largest fruit processors in California. In that case, they actually have massively costly waste streams that they're paying to dispose of or discharge in the sewer. We can take it and make that cost into a high value revenue business model. We also have a partnership with the US Department of Agriculture to optimize these processes for our ag tech uh, clients. Uh, and ultimately, we close the loop. We actually can make products, like in that example, for example, for a food processor, particularly a consumer-facing brand, where we can take their waste stream, we can turn it into a supply chain asset, like a shipping pallet, for example, so that the, their waste from the creation of their product actually becomes the means to then distribute that product. And when that fails, cracks, breaks, we can feed with the waste the shipping pallets or whatever the product is back in the system. So there's actually a true zero-waste closed-loop narrative. And again, you can imagine the kind of environmental uh, consumer narrative that one gets from that. Um, our team uh, is a very experienced team, very diverse too. I've uh, done a couple things. I uh, had a energy company that went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange in 04. Um, I own a couple of uh, agriculture focused businesses. I own the largest actually container rental uh, company to the agriculture industry in the US and in Africa. Jeff and Dane Anderson, the brothers there, are the inventors of our process, and they've dedicated their entire careers to uh, unlocking sustainable innovations in waste and wastewater. Uh, Ian DeWert, a very good friend of mine, is uh, our CFO, and we actually lured him away from a cushy hedge fund job to do some real work with us. Um, so hopefully he'll thank us one day. Did I get through? Was that three minutes? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Talk a little bit more about the products you're making and uh, how you're competing out in the market with those, the differentiators. Right. So we actually, we're process oriented. So we make the waste into resin. That's what we're very good at. In, term, in fact, we don't do any product manufacture ourselves. We partner with existing manufacturers who have products that can add, can use our PHA material or blend it in. In many cases, though, we get a little more leverage rather than kind of a standard resin, uh, resin sale offtake agreement because we can bring an embedded host. To give you an example, we're in discussions with Driscoll's Berries, the big berry producer. They want to make a field tote that would be biodegradable to pick their berries in. So we can go to a you know, resin offtake uh, plastic manufacturer and say, hey, we'll sell you our resin, but we can also bring you an anchor, you know, a prominent consumer-facing buyer who will take a million units. So it allows us to get, get a little more leverage and capture a little more revenue on the negotiation side. Yeah, if, if I have it correctly, your input, your raw material feed, it does not include petroleum products, petroleum-based plastics? That's correct. It's, it's organic? It's organics. Okay, so with that thought in mind, end-of-life management of your products, it biodegrades. Is there any residual to be concerned with environmental impacts and so forth? Uh, not in PHAs, no, actually. In fact, it's, it, it, you can put it in soil, you can put it in the ocean, you don't have residuals. And I could, I'm not the best person to talk about this. I'm a pretend scientist, not a real scientist, but I can certainly get you more information afterwards if you want. There's been several studies done. So. Who else is competing for that, uh, that input that, uh, that you're taking in for the bioplastics? I know you said it's actually a cost 
to uh, to many of these major ag producers that That's are correct. seeing it as waste. I would think that composting, amongst other things, might be another alternative path for it. Who are you competing with to get the input? Well, it's interesting. So on the ag side, it's a little different than the waste side. There's almost two discrete models, sort of an agriculture partner product and a waste hauler product. So on the ag side, they generally sell their waste streams. They're not actually being monetized by a waste hauler at all. They go to cattle feed, for example. And all these people have indicated, hey, we, you know, some years we can get money, so that the cattle guys will take this, some years they won't, depending on corn, alfalfa, et cetera. So if you can take something that's a variable and make it a fixed rate of return for, in the agriculture industry, that's a, a wonderful thing as far as they're concerned. From the waste hauler perspective, we'll partner with an existing composting operation. We have a partnership with Recology in San Francisco where they actually are still able to make their compost product. We're taking the volatile fatty acids off, and these are the materials, of course, that they have to pay to treat. So we cut their water treatment costs, uh, we cut the potential for odors, and I think perhaps most significantly, we allow them to capture more material because their, their systems become more efficient in the same operational footprint, which of course, from a waste hauler standpoint, pitched a lot of waste haulers on this, it's like, yeah, neat science project, we want to get more material and move it. So it's kind of a win-win with a waste hauler.